My name is Abhishek Jain and welcome back to the Docker tutorial series part 17. The topic I choose for today's video is a Docker Swarm. So what is Docker Swarm? Docker Swarm is a container orchestration component of a Docker which actually help us to manage a multiple containers which are running on a multiple machine. There are few basic terminology which I felt is really, really important for a beginner to understand before they actually build something on a Docker Swarm. So today we are gonna try to understand all these basic terminology which you can see on my screen with the demo. So let's quickly jump to the demo parts. So I have one machine where we have a Ubuntu running. So let me just quickly check which version I am running on this. So uh, we have, okay, I just used the wrong command and that has to be underscore. Okay, so we have a Ubuntu 18.04 and let me just quickly see which version of Docker we are running on this. Okay, 18.06. Okay, so um, the very first command which I'm just gonna run is docker swarm help. And before that, let me just put docker help. Okay, so if I just go up, you will see inside the management command, we have this swarm. Okay, so it helps us to manage swarm. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to run a docker swarm help. Okay, so if you will see docker swarm help will give us what all commands docker swarm support. So we have these many commands and today's video, what we're going to cover is we're going to cover init, which is actually to initialize a swarm. Then we're gonna see the join, join token and a leaf. So today we're just gonna cover these four commands and in upcoming videos we're gonna cover the rest of them. Now the very first command which I'm gonna cover is docker swarm init, then I'm just gonna put a help. Okay, so now you can see what all options we can use with init, right? So if you will see, I'm just gonna use a very first command which actually advertise the address, right? And docker swarm init, actually help us to initialize the docker swarm and so if i just run this docker swarm in it with the option and this requires a ip followed by a port so ip is for my machine is 10.0.0 dot 10 okay if you will see what this command is doing, it's swarm initialized, current node as this is now a manager. So when we run this command, automatically, whatever the machine and I port I'm just gonna give, that machine is going to be act as a manager. So now this machine becomes a manager. So that's the basic and the first terminology which I wanted to cover. So that is how you can define a manager, right? If you will see, to add a worker to this swarm, run the following commands. So what does it mean when you want to add a worker to this swarm, right? So as I mentioned, the Docker swarm is an orchestration component which actually help us to maintain or manage a container which are running on a multiple machine. So if we have another machine, if I want to add that particular machine as a worker node in this particular swarm, I have to run this below command. Okay. So we're gonna see how we can do that, right? And afterwards, if in one particular swarm, we can have multiple managers and we can have a multiple worker as well, right? So apart from that, what I wanted to tell you is the worker manager, the swarm manager is one which actually manage all the worker threads. So you can just run few commands that we're gonna see in upcoming videos, right? So the next command which I just wanted to explain you is a node, docker node ls. So what exactly it tells. So before that, if I just put the no docker node help, let's see. Docker node is to manage swarm nodes. What are nodes? So whatever the machines you are just, uh, you know, putting inside the swarm cluster, those work as a node. So right now we have only one machine which is working as a manager and you can see the output which I'm just highlighting here and the manager status is leader, right? And the node, when I run the Docker node, which is actually help us to manage the node, there are few commands which we can use, right? But right now we are just gonna use this LS in upcoming videos, we're gonna cover the rest of them, right? So if I just put a Docker node LS, which we have already seen, right? So let me just quickly clear this. And if I just put a docker info here, so what's gonna happen? Oh, I just type it wrong. 
Okay, so if you just see the output of docker info is, you will see the swarm is active. You can see the node ID which is same what we got when we just run the initialize command and is manager true? Yes, it's true. Manager is one, node is one. What would happen if I want to leave this? So there is one option in a docker swarm which is docker swarm leave. Right, so let me just run it and it's gonna fail, right? So if I just read through this error response from a daemon, daemon, you are trying, you are, we are attempting to leave the swarm on a node that is participating as a manager and removing the last manager, it is all the current state of a swarm. So use this option, right? So what I'm gonna do is if I just put a docker swarm leave and if I use a force option, okay, so node left the swarm and if I just put the docker info again, let's see. What's the output? You will see swarm is inactive and you are not seeing that node ID, manager ID and all those stuff, right? Now, if I just run the same command again, docker init, because right now it is not running in a swarm mode and there is no manager, there is no machine, there is no node, right? That we can also verify with docker node alice. So there is nothing, right? Error response that this node is not a swarm manager, right? So what I'm gonna do is, I'm just gonna initialize this machine again as a manager. And the command for that is docker swarm init advertise adder than the IP. Okay, so now we have, now we just running this again machine in a swarm mode, right? That is the another terminology which I wanted to cover. So right now this machine becomes a swarm. It's running in a swarm mode, right? So if I just put a Docker info again, you will see that swarm will again become active. Then we have a node ID, is manager, manager nodes, right? Now we have this command. So suppose I have another machine that I have already make it up and running. And if I run this command and this run, this command says to add a worker to this swarm, right? So I have another machine, right? So if I just clear this and if I just run the command, which I just get when I just initialize the swarm manager. And if I just run this, so this node joined a swarm as a worker, okay? And right now, if I just put a docker node ls, right, now you can see we have two machines. This is the machine which is leader, which is a manager, and we have this machine which we added as a th worker. And here you can see this node joined a swarm as a worker. So this is the another terminology which is a worker, right? Now if I just put a docker info here, you will see swarm is active, node id this, manager is true, but you will see manager is one, and now we have two nodes, right? And if I just put a docker info on, now this machine has become a worker, right? So let's quickly see what is there. So swarm is active, node ID, then we have a is manager, false, right? Then we have a node address, which is this, and we have a manager address as well, right? Now, similarly, if we just want to, if this worker want to leave, let's see. If you remember on a manager, we have to use a force option, but this is a worker, so we don't need to use this. If we have to put docker info, you will see swarm becomes inactive. And if I just run a docker node ls here, let's see, it's down. Status, you can see it's down. Earlier it was not down, it was ready, right? So um, that's it from my side for this video. So what we had covered so far, we just, we try to understand what is swarm mode, what is manager, what is worker, what is node, right? And, and we just cover few uh, basic commands as well. So that's it from my side for this video. In the upcoming videos, we will be covering more advanced and more advanced concept related to a Docker Swarm. We're gonna create a Docker Swarm cluster where we'll be having a multiple managers, multiple workers, and then we're gonna see the actual power of a Docker Swarm, what exactly it can do for us with the real-time production-like application. So that's it from my side. If you have any feedback or any comment, please feel free to put that in a comment section and I will be more than happy to help you or to maybe explain if you are having any doubt on any of the concept of any of the content. So as always, stay healthy and keep learning a new stuff.